What's going on, Just Hoop Talk Nation? Welcome back to another episode of The Rooks. You are here with myself, Will Thompson. Today, we're going to be breaking down another rookie. So if you're not familiar with this, if you're new to this, first things first, please hit the subscribe button. Hit the like on, hit the like button on this video. I'm getting a lot of views, not as many subscribers. So we really appreciate it if you guys hit that subscribe button to our channel. Um, this is my show. My name is Will. This is my show on the Just Hoop Talk Network. On this show, I am going to be breaking down different rookies. So every episode, I'll be breaking down a different rookie. Today, we're going to be talking about Peyton Pritchard of the Boston Celtics. So let's get into it. We're going to talk about the. We're going to start with background, um, what he's doing currently, some strengths, some weaknesses, and then a future forecast for him. So let's get into it. Um, Peyton Pritchard. So. 22 year old rookie from Oregon, uh, was born and raised in the state of Oregon, was the high school basketball player of the year, Mr. All World in Oregon, took his talents to Oregon University or the University of Oregon um, to play for the Ducks. There he played four years. Uh, I think they went to a final four his freshman year. If I'm not mistaken, it was either his freshman year or his sophomore year. He was part of, he was part of a final four team there. Um, played really well his senior year, was a finalist for the Naismith Award, uh, was one of the top players in college basketball. Um, that was really when he made his name and established himself in the NBA draft was his senior year. Uh, so coming in was forecasted as kind of being a mid to late first round guy, and that's exactly where he ended up. So he was drafted 26 overall by the Boston Celtics. Um, he is a six foot one, listed at 195 pounds. To me, he looks a little bigger than that. He looks like kind of a stockier guy. I'm, I weigh more than that, I'm 6'2". He looks like a big dude, man. So, but they got him listed at 195. Um, and yeah, that's, that's his background. So we'll get into where he's at and what he's doing currently. So like I said, was drafted by the Boston Celtics. Um, he is currently on the roster for the Boston Celtics. He is the backup point guard for the Celtics. And that's saying a lot because that Celtics team is a deep team. Um, and it's always been a deep team. They have a lot of talent. Talent. So for him to, to be able to crack that lineup and to get substantial playing time so far is a big deal. That's saying a lot. Um, they got a lot of a lot of veterans, a lot of experience. They're pretty deep at the point guard position, so that's how you know he's balling. That's how you know he's playing well. The, just the fact that he's been able to crack that lineup is really impressive. Um, he obviously the fact that Kemba Walker is out currently has opened up a lot for him. But even still, Marcus Smart is starting at the point guard position, and they have Jeff Teague there as well, who's a veteran who's been in the league a long time. Um, and Peyton is still able, has been able to get out and uh, get himself some substantial minutes. And uh, he's looked really good so far for the Celtics. Like I said, he's in that backup point guard role. Um, uh, Jeff Teague was out for a while. I think he was out for two games. And Peyton really stepped up. That was kind of his breakout game was against the, um, the Raptors where he had 23 points. And I think it was eight assists. Uh, had a really, really big game. That was like his welcome to the NBA moment. He had played well before that, but that really established him and kind of put him on the scene as a, as a potential top rookie this year. Um, he looked solid. I've been, I personally, I've been surprised by his ability to score. Uh, he's shooting 51% from the field, shooting 42% from three. So his scoring ability has, was what really jumped out to me, and that's what's really impressed me. Um, the last game that they played, Jeff Teague was back, and they were both able to get minutes. They shared minutes. They were actually on the court together. So Peyton was playing off the ball a little bit at times, and I, I like that for him. Um, I think if he's going to continue to get minutes this year, um, he's going to have to be able to play off the ball be able to knock down shots consistently and continue to play defense and um, play really, really well um, off the ball and knock down shots. Like, uh, so I got a little lost there. <laughs> but um, I think what they like most about him and the reason he's been able to play so much is he's 
really, really consistent. So we'll get into some of his strengths and his weaknesses now. So strengths, I would say he has great instincts. Um, he looks like a guy who just knows how to play the game. You can tell he's been playing for a while. Obviously, he came into the league. He's 22 years old. He has a lot of experience. He played four years at a high level in college basketball. He's played a lot. Um, so he has a lot of experience, and he has really great instincts. Um, also, I really like his toughness. He's a really physical guy. Uh, he's a bigger, kind of stockier, stronger guy. So he, that, translate for, that translates really well for him defensively and offensively. Um, he's, a, he's definitely a scorer. Um, that's a good thing. That's a good thing for the Celtics to have a third and fourth and fifth option scorer because um, there's a lot on Jason Tatum and a lot on Jalen Brown. So if they have a guy that they can bring off the bench that can bring instant offense and they can, that can come off the bench and, and give them buckets, that's a positive. If he's able to come out and score consistently, he's going to find a lot of playing time there in Boston. Um, another thing that is really important for him, I think is a big strength for him, is he doesn't necessarily always need the ball to be effective. Like I said, he can knock down shots. He can play off the ball a little bit. But he's also a hustle player. He's, he's the guy out there playing hard defensively, chasing down loose balls, getting dirty, getting his hands dirty a little bit, and making his impact felt outside of just having the ball in his hand. So that's a big thing on a team like that that's going to be possibly making a deep run. He's got to be able to do things like that to continue to find himself playing time and find himself a, a role on this team. Um, so we'll get into some of his weaknesses. Uh, this isn't my favorite thing to do, but uh, I got to point out some things that I think he can kind of work on um, to help establish himself better in the league. Um, I think he's a little bit slow footed. You can see that offensively and defensively, and he lacks a lot of size. Now, to be fair, he's a really strong, really physical player. So he makes up for that with his strength, but he's going to have to work on getting a little quicker moving laterally defensively um, and also, you know, being quicker and figuring out ways to be effective with the ball in his hand offensively and just being a little bit quicker. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, I think outside of that, not a lot of weaknesses. I think just like most rookies in the league, just being consistent. That's one of the biggest things that you see with rookies. They have these highs and lows. Um, if he's able to be consistent and, and become a guy that they know that they can rely on off the bench for, you know, a couple buckets, uh, some assists, some great defensive play, he is going to be on the court a lot. So, yeah, just really working on that consistency. But that that goes to, you know, for most rookies in the league right now. Um, so we'll get into the, the forecast for him. Um, I I really like. I, I really like him a lot. I think he's going to continue to play. When Kemba gets back, it's going to get interesting. I think his minutes are going to be reduced. Um, he's going to be battling with Jeff Teague for those backup point guard, backup off the ball minutes. Uh, like I said, when Kemba comes back, he's going to come back into the, the starting lineup. That's going to bump Marcus Smart over to the off guard. Uh, it's going to be tough to find a lot of minutes, so he's going to have to take advantage of every opportunity, every opportunity that he gets, but I think his potential to be able to play off the ball and be effective will be huge for him long term. Um, if I'm forecasting for his career and I'm trying to think of who would I compare him to, who could he be like, the first player that comes to mind, this is just the first player that comes to mind for me is like a Fred Van Fleet, um, a guy who's not super athletic, who's not super big kind of stockier, kind of a stronger guard, obviously had a longer career in college, um, and a guy who can play your point guard, can initiate your offense, but can also play off the ball, um, is really tough defensively, can knock down shots at a high level. Uh, right now, uh, Fred, I feel like, can create more shots off the dribble than Peyton, and I think that's something that he's going to have to work on and develop a little bit to be super effective in the league. But I think if I'm projecting him at his best, that's kind of where that's the kind of the mold that I see him in as a Fred Van Fleet type of player. So we'll see. Who knows? I, I I would say overall he's off to a great start with the Boston Celtics, and uh, I'm looking forward to seeing more from him and from that team and seeing what his silly can be. So let me know what you guys think. Is is Peyton Pritchard a 
is he a Fred Van Fleet type of type of guy? Is he a, you know a big money guy at some point in his career, or is he gonna kind of fade away? Um, let me know in the comment section below. Please, guys, feel free to hit that subscribe button, hit the like button, and I will see you guys again on the next video. Peace out.